If Israel attacks Iran, then the plan is to call Shia Sunni warfare. If Israel attacks Iran, then the plan is to try to provoke Shia Sunni war. Any Shia here? All Shia? Any Sunni here? No. Any No fight, huh? <laughs> Don't fight here. This is Israel plan to bring about Shia Sunni war. So Muslims will fall. Many people say, that due to the difference between Shia and Sunni, it is impossible to unite them. Let's take a look on the difference between, Shia and Sunni. Both Shia and Sunni, believe that Adam was the first man created by God. Both believe on the holy book Quran. Both believe on one God. Shia and Sunni believe that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last Prophet. Both agree that virtue in religion is based upon peace. Both Shia and Sunni denied the resurrection of Hazrat Isa al -Salam. Both believe on all prophets which are mentioned in Quran. Both believe that mosque is the place of worship. Friday is a day of worship for both Shia and Sunni. Both believe that man may marry up to four women. About Sunni originating with the teaching of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, a 7th century Arab religious and political figure. And believe, as Ret, Abu Bakr is his successor. About Shia, originating with the teachings of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, a 7th century Arab religious and political figure. And believe that his son-in-law, Hazret Ali, is his successor. They both sacrifice their whole life for Islam. Unfortunately, today we have divided Islam on their names. Isn't it hurting? They never did any kind of comparison, they never fought with each other. They were best friends and they were the top famous, companions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Unfortunately today we are fighting and dividing Islam on their names. Is this is a way? to remember the heroes of Islam. According to Sunni, successors after the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him are, Hazret Abu Bakr, Hazret Aisha, Hazret Omar, Hazret Osman, Hazret Ali, Hazret Imam -e Hassan, Hazret Imam -e Hussein. According to Shia, successors after the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, 12 infallible Imams from the Prophet Hazret Muhammad peace be upon him progeny. Use of statues is strictly forbidden in both Shia and Sunni. Place of origin is Saudi for both of them, pillars of Islam for Sunni, 1. Shayhada, testament of faith, 2. Salah, prayer, 3. Zakat, almsgiving, 4. Psalm, fasting, 5. Hajj, pilgrimage, pillars of Islam for Shia, 1. Salat, worship, 2. Psalm, fast, 3. Hajj, pilgrimage, 4. Zakat, almsgiving, 5. Comes, 1 fifth, 6. Umbil Maraf promotion, 7. Na in al Munka, dissuasion. 8. Tawala, reaffirmation. 9. Tabra, disassociation from the enemies of Islam. Second coming of Hazrat Isa al-Salam is affirmed by both of them. 
Visiting shrines are permitted in both Shia and Sunni. What is the difference between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims? Before going to the differences, let me tell you the common things. Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims have got majority of things common together. Both Sunnis and Shias believe in one God, Allah. Both Sunnis and Shias believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, being the last and greatest and final Prophet. Both Sunnis and Shias believe in Quran, being the last book from Allah. Both Sunnis and Shias pray morning, zuhur, asr, maghrib, isha, and the number of rak'ats, same. Two for morning, four for zuhur, four for asr, three for maghrib, four for isha. Both of them fast, and they fast same month of Ramadan. You don't find Shias fasting the month of Ramadan and Shias fasting the month of Shawwal. No. So, same month, same duty. Both of them go to the same place for Hajj, Mecca, and same time. So if you analyze the common thing between them, cannot be counted. But there are differences. Main difference is who are the leaders of Islam and Muslims after the Prophet. When we go to defend the PhD thesis, we're mature. An MA thesis, we're mature. But when it comes to issues of the Muslims, we become like my three-year-old son. Temper tantrums. We have masjids in Birmingham where, subhanAllah, they will tell you, the people in this masjid are deviant. The people in this masjid are deviant. Ya Allah, we have more flavors than Baskin Robbins now. But how is it that we can even fathom working with non-Muslims when we cannot even work with our own fellow Muslims. Haters of truth. But there is a form of ghurur that is mentioned by the scholars where the person spends all their time on ilm al-khilaf. That he gets the books of fiqh, he gets the books of aqidah, and he only studies the differences between this scholar and that scholar. So he becomes a master in showing you the differences between that and that. And, and he can actually point out a difference and tell you uh, 10 uh, deleals for this thing. He can tell you the opinion of that and he can't even make Salat right. But Ilm al-Khilaf. And so what happens is, many of our young people get caught up fighting each other over triviality. Now there are some points which are very important. But the difference of opinion should not make you hate another Muslim. It should not make you threaten the life of another Muslim. Then what is the purpose of it? And the Prophet ﷺ has told us, مَا دَلَّ قَوْمٌ قَبْتْ بَعْدَ هُدَى إِلَّا أُوتُوا الْجَدَلِ That people would not go astray after guidance until they were given the ability to argue with each other. The ability to argue when our energy should not be spent on arguments, that we need to go forward. Because we are in a deep struggle now, whether we know it or not. And if you're in a hot struggle, a hot battle, and, and, and the bullets are flying and people are dying, and a Muslim comes on your side and you look at him, are you going to say, what madhab are you, brother? What does it matter, man? You have a Muslim on your side, man. But some people are so overly heavy, they are actually tilting toward this. Their whole life is based on khilaf, on finding what is wrong with other Muslims and attacking them and shooting them down and destroying them and breaking up their organization. You don't have to have Mossad. You don't have to have these organizations, man. Just let loose some of these twisted Muslims on them. And so the great scholars of Islam a thousand years ago said, it is ghurur, it is ghurur, it is deception. And we need to look at this before we even look outside. Today we will be discussing a very, very important topic and that is unity and the diversity in unity. 
Many people have misunderstood the entire meaning of unity. Some feel that it means everyone must think the same, everyone must do the same, everyone must believe the same, everyone must be in one direction and then only we will be considered united. Whereas that is absolutely impossible. If we've ever thought of it, even within one family, two members of the same family cannot achieve that. Even husband and wife cannot achieve that. So what then is the meaning of unity? When we stand united, we have certain common goals and we have certain common items we'd like to achieve. The goals, the objectives, and we work towards them. And these are broad objectives. The fact that we can tolerate each other, sometimes you may even have a person whom we can be united with, but his aims and objectives are slightly different to ours. And when we say united, we stand together, we respect each other, we do not harm each other, we tolerate each other, we can engage with each other in discussion, possibly even in debate, nothing wrong with a respectful debate in order to learn and not in order to hate each other and to draw lines. However, when we have that common purpose, we need to know primarily we are human beings. We all have a nose, we all have eyes and we all have the faculties that we do have. We are all in need of oxygen and we would all suffer if that oxygen was taken away. We all need water, we need food and this is why we need to cooperate. The Quran says, Wala tansa wul fadla baynakum. Do not forget the virtue that you need to adopt between one another. There is a virtue. I respect you, you respect me. 25 years, Muslim world without help living. Without help means life. And shaitan and devils find so many chances. To Muslims to be divided and for wrong understanding for Islam. Now, subhanallah, this is a good sign that we are here. It is meaning that after a long years, Muslims asking a unity. They are understanding that he must be all together under the flag of Rasulullah. It is also in a region where crossroads and transit routes of world trade are located. The straits and canals joining the Black and Mediterranean Seas, the Mediterranean Sea with the Persian Gulf, and the Persian Gulf with the Indian Ocean, as well as the main transit points in the Indian Ocean are all under Muslim control. In terms of strategic underground reserves such as oil and natural gas, the world's wealthiest lands are part of the Islamic region. Roughly half of the oil consumed in the West is exported from the Islamic world, as is 40% of the world's agricultural production. The Persian Gulf holds two-thirds of the planet's discovered crude oil reserves. Saudi Arabia alone holds 25.4% of the world's oil reserves, or 262 billion barrels. Moreover, the Middle East has 40% of the global natural gas reserves. 35% of those reserves are in the Gulf region. Algeria, Libya, and the Central Asian countries also possess very rich resources. Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan are two of the world's leading gold producers. Turkey has one of the world's richest boron reserves. Tajikistan has the world's largest aluminum producing facility. Eric, you've been warning of something called a new Islamic caliphate. What is that and why do you believe it's closer to becoming a reality? This is a term that every one of our viewers need to know because they're going to be hearing it more and more in the months to come. What the Islamic caliphate is, is basically, Charlene, a union, if you can imagine it, of every Islamic nation into one all-powerful military, economic, political force. Now there's some 57 Islamic nations in the world, so you can imagine how strong the so-called caliphate would be. The last time we saw it was in 1924. It was disbanded back then. The Turkish Ottoman Empire led the last caliphate. The army of the Khilafah was undefeatable. They could not understand the Crusaders when they go to find the Khilafah, even the Christians, 
who live in the Khilafah are fighting the Crusaders. They cannot understand this. Our own brothers in religion, the Christians, are fighting for the Khilafah. They could not understand that power. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, we have left nothing. We have left nothing out of this book has come to deal with every single matter. But the Kuffar, they worked hard to separate the deen from the state.